Well, praise the Lord. Good evening. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us this evening here. I am Pastor Jim Settinger. I'm the pastor of the Whiteland New Life Fellowship, and I am just so thrilled to be here this evening to be able to share a Bible study with you tonight. We are having just a little bit different format. We're experimenting with some new things, and we're just hoping that uh, everything will work out. But I'd like to welcome you this evening to the Whiteland New Life uh, Wednesday evening group connections and I, I just know that we're going to have a wonderful time this evening and and we're going to continue with everything that we we go to do because uh, we know that uh, the Lord is in control and that he is here with us this evening so if you're out there just give us a big shout out online we just uh, love to to hear from you uh, if you have any comments please post your comments in the comment section and and uh, just follow along with us this evening you know, every weekend we always have uh, video announcements and uh, tonight we're going to share with you firsthand what this coming weekend's video announcements are. So if you'd just like to, to just uh, pay attention here just for a little bit, you'll be informed of everything that's getting ready to take place in the church. So watch these announcements. Praise the Lord. You ought to be informed then of everything that's getting ready to take place in the church. Um, as you saw on there, this coming uh, Saturday will be our, um, our food pantry and uh, we'll be there from, 12, or from 10 to 12. And um, just uh, if you'd like to be a supporter of, of our food pantry and like to give us a monetary gift, we'd love for you to be able to do that. So if you would, just log on to the Whiteland New Life um, cog.com and uh, share your gift with us and you can actually put it towards any of the ministries that we have and um, we know that your support will go a long way and we certainly do thank you so much for your support you know it's a wonderful thing to worship the Lord and to praise the Lord and I believe before any type of message is given or any type of study whatsoever we need to prepare our hearts through worship and you know, the Bible tells us in the book of James, James chapter 2, verse 23, it said, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. If you believe in, in God yourself, you are also a friend of God. So let's sing that this evening, and let's worship God together.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are friends of God because we, we believe in him. I'm so thankful for an opportunity to get to know who God is and to believe in him because I know that I know that I know that he is my source. And I'm going to talk about that this evening also. Let's continue tonight in our worship. Deep as walls 
and you won't stop now. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise. My soul. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters, wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your presence that's here with us, God. We just know that, Father, that you tell us where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are right there in the midst, God. And we know that you are here with us today, Father. And we thank you and we praise you for that, Lord God. Now, tonight, church, uh, we're going to be going into the, the book of, uh, of John. John chapter 15. We're going to start in verse 1. But before we, we do that, um, I want you to get your Bibles and go ahead and get your place there. But I, I really feel like we need to prepare ourselves one more time, we, if we can, with, with another praise and worship song. So, so just ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you this evening. Let's sing this song one last time. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone 
Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just thank you and I praise you for this opportunity that we have this evening, Lord, to be able to get into your word. Father, as each and every person logs in and as they go to watch this video tonight, Father, I just pray that, God, that you would touch them and minister to them at their most deepest need, Lord God. Let the word of God dwell in them richly this evening, Father, and give them wisdom and understanding, Lord God, of what your word has to say. And God, I'll give you all the praise and glory, Father, for all that is done. I thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, like I shared with you just earlier, we're going to be going to the book of John. John chapter 15, verse 1, and we're going to go through uh, verse 10 this evening. Again, I'm so glad that you've chosen to be here with us this evening in our, our family group connections. And uh, we know that, uh, that we just have a wonderful time when we get together, especially a wonderful time in the Word. Anytime that we're able to get in the Word together, it's a wonderful thing. So 
uh, when you have an opportunity, if you will, please just uh, share something in the comment page and uh, we'll know that you're there with us. And if you have a prayer need, we'd like to also pray for you as well. So let's go ahead now and get started in the book of John, John chapter 15, starting in verse 1. I read to you what Jesus actually says right here. This is all Jesus's words all the way from 1 through through 10. Here's what he says. He says, I am the true vine. You know, when we see that, when I see that, that, that makes me think that there's things out there that are false. And, and you know, we all know that there's a lot of false teachings, false doctrines, and, and just a lot of fake stuff that is out there. I like how Jesus says, I am the true vine. Even when it comes to the, the different things like apparel and the, the different supplies and the things that we have, there are things out there that aren't authentic. They're called knockoffs. They are a, a replica of. And um, having a, a replica, replica of or a knockoff of something, it might make you look like you've um, got a, a lot. But the truth is, is that it's fake. It's, it's phony, it, it's not real. And when you, when you think about this and you, you talk about the, the scriptures and you talk about the, the word of God, when he, Jesus talks about the true vine, there are a lot of people that try to take you away from, from Jesus and tries to take you away from the truth. But the word of God tells us that Jesus is the truth. And I like how he shares here in this parable in the opening part of chapter one, where he says, I am the true vine. And then he says, my father is the husbandman. We're talking about God himself. God is his father. He is the husbandman, or in some versions call it the vine dresser. He's also the vine dresser. But you know what I like to say is, is that he is the source. And when you put verse 1 completely together and you read it and it says, I am the true vine, Jesus says, and my father the husbandman, we can see a picture of the vine being planted in the soil of the source. God is that source. And that's what we need to understand, that God is not only the vine source, which is Jesus here as he is sharing, but he's our source as well. Then it goes on to say in verse two, it says every branch in me. Now Jesus is talking here and he says, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Now, when you think about that and, and, and you hear what Jesus says here, he says that every branch in me, so that means there's branches in him that's not bearing fruit, the father takes away, it says. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, it, it's hard to believe that if you're, if you're in Christ, that you can't bear fruit. But the truth is, is that you can be in Christ and still not bear fruit. Why is that? It's because you're not attached to the vine. You've got alternative motives. You've got a different outlook or a different perspective of who Jesus is. And if, if, you, you know, if, you're, if you're abiding in the vine, then the Bible says you are going to bear fruit. But if you're, if you're not attached to the vine in, in, in a way that, that the vine will bring nourishment to you, then you're not going to bear fruit. I was outside this, this evening looking at my tomato plants and I noticed one uh, whole limb had broken and fallen down on it. And every bit of the leaves that were on there was starting to wither up and, and to dry up. So I, I noticed that it wasn't attached to the plant anymore. And because of that, it dried up. A Christian is the same way. If they don't keep themselves attached to Jesus, then they're going to get purged. Now, the way that this says is, is that God, it says he, but that he means God, purges it. More or less, he prunes it or he cleans the vine up. He takes care of making sure that that, that is what happens. He, and what he wants it to do, he wants us to, to bring forth fruit. And it says to bring forth more fruit. 
is what this says. And when, when we look at this scripture, and you, if you're abiding in the vine, if you're abiding in the vine and you're not producing, then you're going to be taken off of the vine. Now let's go into verse 3. Verse 3, Jesus says this. He says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You, the, the Word of God is a cleansing agent, and we need to remember that, that the Word of God is a cleansing agent. What does the Word of God do? The Word of God condemns sin. That's exactly what it does. It inspires holiness. It promotes spiritual growth. And it reveals power for service. This is what the Word of God does, and it, it cleanses us, it cleans us, and it, it helps to allow us to, to grow. And we need to understand that when, when God goes to purge the vine, he's purging the vine of all of those um, branches that are, are not producing, that aren't producing the fruit that they are supposed to produce. And um, Jesus says, now you are clean. And you're clean because God took all that bad fruit or that, those bad branches off of you. In verse um, 4, it says this, abide in me and I in you. So you see, the, the disciple abides in Jesus and Jesus abides in the disciple. Now, it, it can't be one or the other. It has to be both. If you abide in Jesus, he is going to abide in you. If you attach yourself to, to Jesus, he's going to attach himself to you. It says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. A lot of people out there try to do that. They try themselves to um, um, do the things on their own and, and not... Um, ask Christ for help or, or God for, for help. And, and a lot of times they end up just falling down and falling into the ditch. It's, he says, abide in me and I in you, in verse four, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. You see, Jesus is the, the true vine and he's connected to the source. And because he's connected to the source, he, we are connected to him, and then therefore we too can get to the source because the, God is the source. And if we try our, ourself to connect to the source any other way than through the true vine, then we are deceiving ourselves and we're going to wither up and we're going to die because it's, it's not going to, to happen. We're going to die spiritually. And, and the thing is, is that we're going to fall into sin and, and sin will certainly separate us from God. So therefore, we want to continue to abide in the vine because the vine is, is Jesus and Jesus is planted in the source and because of that, we are in Christ and we too can get to the source who is God through Jesus. Verse 5, it says this, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bank brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now we know the Bible tells us in, in Philippians 4.13, it says this, it, it, it says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But if we are not in Christ, we can't do those things that we would do. You know, there's a, a supernatural power that takes a hold of us. It's called the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and we too can receive that by attaching ourselves to the vine who is attached to the source. And the source is is God. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to keep on saying that because I, I like hearing that. I really do. I, I, I love hearing that. In verse 6, it says this, if any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and they cast them into the fire and they are burned. Well, the truth is, is that when you are not attached to the vine, you are a branch that, that has no source. 
you, you may think you have the source when you are attached to a, a certain branch that's not Jesus. You may think that you have it, but there's coming a day where you're going to be let down. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be discouraged because if you was planted in the true vine, you would not weather up because he has life-giving water, life-giving bread, and everything. He is the bread of life, and he is the life-giving water as well. I like verse 7. What it says here in verse 7, it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, it says, and it shall be done unto you. Wow, that's a promise from Jesus. Jesus says this. I'm going to read it again. If you abide in me, that's Jesus, the true vine. He says, and my words abide in you. Now remember, we're cleansed by his word, right? He cleans us up by his word. If his words abide in us as well, Jesus is the word made flesh as a matter of fact, and we need to remember that that Jesus is the word made flesh. But if the, if the word abides in you, it says this, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Everybody say a good amen out there because this is the word of God. This is Jesus telling us this now. If we go over to chapter 16 of, of John and, and we look at, at chapter 16, um, verse 23, Let's see what that says. Chapter 16, verse 23. Jesus says in the middle part of this verse, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Do you see that? That's a promise also. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, in Jesus' name, the name above all other names, Jesus. Now, see, a lot of times people will go in their own strength and, and ask God for things in their own names. They won't even bring up Jesus. But the truth is, is that in the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, it says that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, Jesus says, I, he will give it you. And then in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says this, it says to um, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. For him that, that, that knocks, it shall be opened unto them. We can just continue to go on because it's so important that we understand that Jesus wants to give us the desires of our heart. But we must be attached to the vine. If we're not attached to the vine, then this principle and this word is not in us. But we need to be attached to the vine so we too can receive this. Then in verse 8 of our text, he says this, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Herein is my Father glorified, he says. Here's how it happens. He's glorified because of this. He's glorified because you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. How else is he glorified? Matthew 6, 5, 16 says to let your light so shine unto man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That is another way that we uh, glorify God. But when we are attached to the vine, to the vine and, and God goes through and he starts to prune. Now pruning sometimes hurts. You know, pruning hurts because he's taken away all of the undesirable stuff and all the un, un things, the things that he doesn't like and the things that he doesn't see, the things that's not going to bear fruit. But he does that so that we, in and of itself, can bear more 
fruit. So our fruit would continue to grow on the vine, or continue to produce, continue to work for his glory. All of this glorifies the God. God, he's, he's glorified in this. Verse nine, it says this, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. He says, continue ye in my love. We need to understand that, that God loved his son immensely. I mean, his love for him was unconditional. His love for him was, was enormous. And Jesus' love for us is the same way. And he encourages us to continue in him, to continue to be attached to the vine. If you choose to separate yourself from the vine, then you've chosen the way of sin and death. For the wages of death, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and we need to understand that this evening, that if you stay attached to the vine, if you stay attached to the source, you will grow, you will flourish, and the fruit that you, that you produce will abound. People will hear your testimony and they'll get saved. That's the fruit that I'm talking about. Fruit is people. It's you sharing what Jesus Christ has done for you in your life and living it out and people will see that and they will honor God and they will receive Christ as their personal savior also. You know, once I remember that back before I was uh, saved, I know the only thing that God saw in me was the sin because that's all he could see. But when Jesus Christ came into my life and God looked at me then, he saw the blood. He didn't see the sin. The sin was already covered by the blood of Jesus. And that is so wonderful. Anything that you have went through in your life can be covered by the blood of Jesus. Any wrongs that you've done throughout your life can be covered by the blood of Jesus. He died on the cross and he bled so that you could receive eternal life. And that's what's amazing. Here's what he says in verse 10 as I finish up this small little study this evening. He says, if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You know, we, we know the Ten Commandments. We get those in the Old Testament where God gives us the Ten Commandments. And then we also know in the Scriptures in the New Testament where Jesus talks about the greatest commandment. And that's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second thing to, to do as well, to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, if, if we continue in his commandments, it says if we continue in his commandments, we will have his love. We'll abide in his love. Even as I have kept my father's commands, he said, Jesus has kept his father's commands. He said, so shall I keep my father's commands because I am loved. Praise the Lord for that. You know, my internet's flickering just a little bit, so you're probably going to experience a little bit of problem out there. I hope not, but um, praise the Lord. We're going to finish this up. Verse, uh, uh, chapter 14 of John, in verse 15, says this, If you love me, he says, you keep my commandments. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And then if we go to 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3, Go over to 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Let's see what it says there. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 says this. For this is love. He says this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Amen? And his commandments are not grievous. Here it is this evening. We need to understand that Jesus is the true vine. There's a lot of fake and a lot of phony and a lot of knockoffs and different things. There's a lot of things out there that wants to try to separate you from the vine. But Jesus is the true vine. 
And Jesus, as the true vine, he's attached to the source, which is his father, who is the husbandman or the vine dresser. He is the source. And with us being attached firmly as branches, as Jesus says, to the vine, we too are able to tap into that source. And let me tell you, that source is abundant. That source will bring freedom to a life that's bound. That source will cause things to, to happen that, that you can't even explain because maybe you've been going through something that's been very trying or whatever and you're tapped into the source and God gives you peace and he gives you comfort and he gives you a way to be able to come out from that. So, so anyway, I, I thank you so much for, for tuning in. Again, this has been our, our Wednesday evening group connections. I'm so glad that we was able to make a connection here because uh, we do believe in connecting to, to God's word and uh, connecting with one another. And um, uh, I'm, I'm Pastor Jim Settinger, and I just thank you so much for being here this evening. We would um, like to ask all of you, if you have a heart to give and you'd like to give, just go to our website there and help support our ministry. And uh, we've got a lot of things that are happening at our church today. As a matter of fact, uh, we've got a new HVA system, that C system that's going in right now. And uh, it's not completely paid for, but praise the Lord, God is faithful. If you'd like to donate to that, we'd love for you to be able to donate to that with us. We uh, also had our deck um, out front, the wheelchair ramp. We had it sealed today. I want to thank Brother Tim Coffey for coming over and doing that. What a blessing that was. Praise the Lord for that. And um, again, we thank you for joining us this evening in our service. And um, we'll just uh, see you next time. But what we're going to do right now, if you're okay with it, we're going to go out of here on some worship this evening. So praise the Lord. Let's worship.
Well, praise the Lord. Worship is a wonderful thing, and I'd like to encourage all of you to continue in your worship for the rest of this week, and uh, we hope to see you in church on Sunday. So have a wonderful week, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in. Praise the Lord.